Over the past couple of years, we've all seen on social media and the news how kindness and politeness seems to have been tossed out the window, especially when it comes to air travel. It's like we've all gone back to caveman days and it's every person for themselves. <laughs> Well, in order to get back some of that kindness and politeness, today I am sharing with you my top 10 air travel etiquette rules that, you know, are kind of unwritten rules everyone should follow when they fly. Think of me as like Emily Post, but for air travel. y'all and welcome. If you're new here, I'm Christy, the Gen X Gypsy, helping you to travel better so you can focus on creating unforgettable memories. Y'all, one of my biggest pet peeves is rudeness, whether it's intentional or unintentional, and it's especially disturbing when you are traveling. I'm amazed at how unaware and unsympathetic people can be. I am hoping to change that by showing how these little things can help help you be more kind and polite to the strangers that you're traveling with. Because ultimately, we are all in this together. And if we just do these little things, we can make an uncomfortable situation more bearable for everyone. Rule number one, don't get drunk. Most of the unfortunate incidents that happen on a plane happen because somebody is inebriated. Now, don't get me wrong. I have friends and family that are nervous flyers and they like to have a drink or two before they get on that plane to help ease their nerves or actually help them sleep while they're on the plane. And honestly, if we're on a long flight, I'm probably gonna have a drink or two as well. But if you know that drinking will make you a bit aggro or very aggro, then you should just stick to juice and soda. Rule number two, use your headphones at all times. Your neighboring passengers don't wanna listen to your music or your movies or your video games. I have had this happen to me on three of the last four flights I've been on. I've had somebody around me that is either playing a game or playing music or listening to videos without headphones in. The worst was my flight to Puerto Rico where I had a kid sitting behind me playing a video game and he kept turning the volume up on that video game the entire flight. It was so frustrating. So make sure when you bring your entertainment on that plane, you are also bringing a way to listen to those sounds so your neighbors don't have to hear them as well. Rule number three, don't talk your neighbor's ear off. If your neighbor has a book out or they keep looking at their phone or they've got headphones that they're getting ready to put into their ears, those are all clear signals that your neighbor does not want to be engaged in a long conversation. Obviously, it's perfectly acceptable to exchange pleasantries because you are going to be sitting next to each other for a long time, but it's important for you to bring your own entertainment onto that flight. Do not board your flight with the expectation that you're going to be conversing with your neighbor the entire time. Rule number four, try to keep your kids in check as much as possible. I absolutely understand how tough it is to travel with kids. I started flying with my daughter when she was three months old and we flew multiple times a year, but I've also been in the situation where I've had a kid kicking the back of my seat for the entire five hour flight and his parents did nothing about it. Make sure you're aware of what your child is doing even if they're not fussing or screaming. Make sure to bring lots of things to entertain your kids with. And don't forget those headphones, especially if your kid is playing a video game on a console that's not on your iPhone or your iPad. Rule number five, try to keep those extraneous movements to a minimum. In other words, don't be a fidgeter. I get it. It is hard to sit in that seat for a long period of time. But remember that every time you're moving around in your seat, you're bouncing the tray table behind you. And that makes it really difficult for somebody to be either eating their snack or maybe working on their laptop. If you need to get up and move around, get up and, you know, take a trip to the lavatory or something and come back. Also try to walk around the airport before you get on the plane to maybe get some 
some of those wiggles out. Rule number six, the middle seat always gets both armrests. If you're in a window seat, you've got the window and you've got your armrest next to the window. And you know, your win is that you get to look out the window. And if you're in an aisle seat, you've got all that extra space to kind of stretch out into, and you've got the ability to get up and down a lot easier than the other people in the row do. Plus, you've got the armrest towards the aisle. So the only win the middle seat gets is having both armrest. So don't be rude and fight the middle seat person for their armrest. They deserve it. Rule number seven, don't put your carry-on bag in an overhead compartment at the front of the plane if your seat is all the way in the back of the plane. I get it. You want to get off that plane as fast as possible and you think if you put your carry-on bag close to the front, you'll be able to book it down the aisle and you'll grab your bag out of that compartment and be on your way. But the problem is when those people who have the seats under that overhead compartment show up to put their carry-on bag in that compartment, now there's no space for it. And they're going to have to put their bag in the back of the plane. And you know what happens when they get up to get off of the plane? They're gonna hold up everybody while they get their bag retrieved from the back of the plane. And now you've made everybody have to slow down from exiting the plane. So make sure you put your carry-on bag in an overhead compartment as close to your seat as possible. And if you're having trouble finding a spot, the flight attendants are always happy to help you. And that rolls in to rule number eight. Allow the rows in front of you to get their bags and begin their exit before you start getting your bag and exiting. There is no race for disembarking the plane. Everybody wants to get off of that plane quickly and you sprinting down the aisle in front of everybody else is not going to win you any friends. And in fact, is just downright rude. So be patient and wait for those in front of you to exit, or at least start the exit of the plane before you move out of your row. Rule number nine, leave the smelly stuff at home. And I'm not just talking about perfumes and colognes, which, oh my God, please, please don't wear that on the plane. I'm also talking about food stuff that is kind of smelly, like onions or tuna fish. If you are even questioning whether something might have an obnoxious smell to somebody else, just don't wear it or leave it at home. I have been very guilty of this in the past. I would bring nail polish to paint my nails while I was on the plane because, you know, trying to multitask and use my time wisely. And then I realized how noxious the nail polish smelled. And I was like, yikes. Yeah, I was that person. Sorry. Rule 10. Lastly, if at all possible, try to hold in your farts. Yes, I am aware that air travel can cause gas in a lot of people, but if all possible, try to hold it in until you can make your way to a bathroom, especially if your last meal might cause some fairly pungent smells. If you would like more advice on farts on a plane and how to deal with jet belly, check out this video next. Thank you so much for watching. And if you would like more travel inspiration tips and hacks, make sure to subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.